the ground multipliers. The ground multipliers is really this observation right here. Um, so what are we saying? The max and min values of some surface is equal to f of xy. Um, we're look, this is what we're looking for, right? Our max and min values of a surface. But it's not the same setting as critical point style optimization, right? Where we say I want max and min values of this surface just anywhere, right? Any top of any mountain, bottom of any valley. No, max min values of the surface subject to a constraint G of X, Y equals C. So I want the max of the min, but only among the um, inputs X, Y that satisfy this equation, G of X, Y equals C, where C is some constant, G is some function, right? Um, the, the max and min, they will occur at points where the gradient of F is parallel to the gradient of G, right? And if we write that condition, what, is par what does it mean that if two vectors are parallel, it means that one can be expressed as a scalar multiple of the other, right? So we'll, so if you want to write it another way, you can call that scalar multiple lambda, right? So you could say that the gradient of F is lambda times the gradient of G. So this is Lagrange multipliers. Um, this is um, hard to see without a diagram, obviously. So let's, let's look at a diagram. Um, so what is this saying? It's saying that we have some um, surface, right? So we have some surface. And right here's our, our surface. And then we have some constraint, g of x, y equals c. And notice g of x, y equals c, it doesn't involve a z at all. It's just a condition on in the x, y plane, right? It's a condition on x and y. So there's some g of x, y equals c, right? And then what we're doing is imagine you're graphing this. You're taking this constraint as inputs. You can take every point on this constraint, da, 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 toss it up to the surface, da, 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 up to the surface, up to the surface, right? So take every point on this constraint and plot the corresponding point up there on the surface, and then connect these all up, right? In order. I need to get my four-year-old help me. I just failed at the. Uh... Connect the dots here. Here we go. So connect, connect the dots in order, um, and then on this green track. Right now we have this kind of this roller coaster track, right? So it's almost like g of x, y equals c, would be the the base or the base of the supports of the this roller coaster track is right. Green would be the actual path of the roller coaster riding, right? Um, the surface f. Right, this this surface, this is e equals f of x y. That's what gives us the height of the roller coaster at each point. Right, um, it also gives heights of lots of other points that are not on the roller coaster. Right, um, it's a whole surface. Right, but the surface is just this one dimensional. Um, this surface, we're taking this surface and we're plucking out just a one dimensional curve from this surface using a constraint on the inputs g of x y equals c. Right. So that's, that's what we're seeing here. Um, and what we want to know is what's the high, where are the max and mins on this roller coaster ride, right? Where do you get to the top of a hill? Where do you get to the bottom of a valley on the roller coaster ride, right? Which will, which could be a max or a min for the surface, but it doesn't have to be, right? It could just be just how that track on the roller coaster goes. So that's what we're searching for, right? So, the, so at least the way I have it drawn here, it looks like, you know, there looks like maybe there's a max up here, right? Maybe that's a maximum point. This kind of looks like a min, right? This looks like maybe a local max, right? But maybe this is the absolute max on that track, right? Um, then this looks like kind of a local min. This looks like a local max. It goes back down, min, and then back to that max. You know, something, something like that. This is just a crude sketch, right? But just to give you an idea of what we're looking for. All right, so... This is the picture of what we're looking for, but it doesn't explain this. Why are we using gradients and parallel gradients, right? What's going on? I think the easiest way to, to see why Lagrange multipliers make sense as a method is 
don't look at it in 3D, right? Instead, just look at the contour plot, right? So take this diagram and draw, you know, your g of x. Should I draw something like this, right? So this is our g of x, y equals c. The same blue path that we have in the figure at left, right? Um, take that and then also put the um, level curves of the surface in this diagram, right? So, <clears throat> so here, notice in, in this diagram, you, you can't really see the green path, or you could, but if you saw the green path, what would it look like? It would just, it would just look like that, right? The green path or the blue path. From the top-down view, if you can't see the z-axis, right? If the z-axis is sticking straight out of the screen, poking you in the nose there, um, right? The, the green and blue paths sit perfectly right on top of each other, right? So so the, the green path isn't so much visible to us, but the, um, or, or you could say the, um, it is, right? But it just, it just duplicates the, the blue path, right? So, um, but I'm going to think of it as just G without a, without a um, Z coordinate, right? Because we're, we're not going to really need the Z coordinate for a second here. Um, but here's what I, what I want then is I do want to graph the level curves of the surface. So I have Z equals some constant, right? And then I have Z equals some constant, some other constant, and I have Z equals some other constant. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to put just like one, two, just for simplicity's sake, right? But even though it might be, you know, these might not be whole numbers or it might be descending in this direction instead of ascending or we'll look at examples, right? But but so so these level curves might be doing whatever, right? Um, but what's the idea here? You could have, say that point right there, right? Um, why would that point be a extrema? Oh, and you know what? Just to make just to make that max actually match the the one in the left. Let me do ascending this way. One, two, three, four, five, three. That's what I want. Um, so here's the idea. The in the surface. Remember from our previous video, right? What does the um gradient tell us? So the gradient, if you draw the level curve, if you take a tangent plane at the level curve, the gradient to the surface is always perpendicular to the level curve, right? Meaning take the level curve, draw a tangent line, and then perpendicular to that, that will be, so that'll be gradient of F, right? It would look like something like that. So it's showing you the rate of steepest ascent. Okay. What would the gradient look like for G. Well, the gradient for G would also look like perpendicular to the tangent lines, right? Because of the same reasoning, if you thought of this as just some variable Z instead of C, right? It's gonna tell you how to get that Z coordinate to increase as fast as possible, right? So thinking of G of X, Y also as a surface, even though we only are interested in one level curve of that surface, just g of x, y, c, for this given c, right? We have that the um, that these are perpendicular as well, right? So then what's going to happen here? The tangent line to g and the tangent line to um, the level curve of f are going to be parallel. Therefore, their gradients are parallel, right? And they don't have to be the same magnitude, right? You can have that one is longer than the other. That's why we allow this lambda to stretch them to make them the same, right? It's just a convenient way to represent this. Um, notice here, you could say, you don't have to talk about gradients at all. You could say a max or min occurs when a tangent line to a level curve of your surface is parallel to a tangent line to the constraint. You could say that, and that would be a valid way to state Lagrange multipliers. Um, it's just not as convenient to calculate. It's just gradients are easier to calculate. So it's 
So it's, instead of saying the tangent line in the surface, the level curve of the surface needs to be parallel to the tangent line of the constraint, it's easier to say, well, let's trade those both out for something that they're perpendicular to, and then see when those things are parallel instead, right? So that's the, the convenient trick here. So, um, And notice also, since we don't have a formula for G, I don't really know here if these gradients are pointing outwards or pointing inwards, but it doesn't matter, right? If you had gradient of G pointing inwards, it's fine. It's still going to work. You would just have a negative lambda value, right? So negative lambda value means they're pointing in opposite directions, but they still have parallel um, parallel tangent lines, right? Um, the other thing to um, note here is um, I think a good mindset for this you know, if you say, well, why, why would that occur? Why would you have a max um, when those tangent lines are the same? <clears throat> I think a good way to think about this is think about um, going on a hike, right? So the blue track is going to be afterwards. It's going to be, if you look at the map and you just look at the, the track of your hike, right? Just see where did I hike from sort of a satellite view, right? Um, well, what path did I hike, right? And then the the level curves in the contour plot, those are that's the topographical map that shows the different all the different you know elevations that you were hiking through. Um, okay, so then what happens? Like as imagine you're walking, so I'll draw a little pink point here. Imagine we're walking here along um, this path G, right? Um, here I started at z equals, say I started at z equals one, that's my the elevation I started at. Then I hiked uphill, uphill, uphill to z equals two. Well, I didn't have any max or mins because I was walking uphill the whole time, right? I'm still walking uphill, still walking uphill, still walking uphill, still walking uphill. And then I hit z equals three, right? This is the z equals three level curve. And then I start descending. Right, I start descending from z equals three. Oh well, there we go. We we must when we switched from walking uphill to walking downhill, that's when we hit a max, right? So it's a lot like the first derivative test from Calc one. Very similar idea. Um, when you when you think about it that way, um, it's just that your input has two di dimensions of freedom, two degrees of freedom, right? But you're still just looking at an output with one degree of freedom, just the z, right? So, okay, so that's um, that's why it why it works like this. All right, and also I should note the there's some lack of correspondence between these diagrams, right? Like this is not showing a min over there, right? So don't don't take this as that this picture on the right totally represents the picture on the left. These are both just random diagrams. I'm just showing the kind of perspective here right in a generic setting um but then now let's do it in a more concrete setting right so that's lagrange multipliers in general let's now look at a, a more specific case so let's let's do this so let's here's a classic introductory lagrange multipliers problem let's say find let's find the um highest Point of intersection <clears throat> of the plane x plus two y equals zero. And the paraboloid z equals x, x squared plus y squared. So this is my goal here. So I so what do I have? I have um, this in the language that we're setting up here. This would be f of x y the surface, right? This would be the constraint g of x, y equals zero, right? And why am I calling it a plane? Well, because if you're, you can think of it as a plane if you want in 
in 3D. That's a perfectly good way to think of it. You can So if you want, you can think of it as just the restriction in the xy plane, you know, just as the line y equals negative one half x. Right? That's that's fine. You can think of it that way. So y equals negative one half x, right? So it would look like kind of this. And you can, so you think of it that way. You can also, or you can think of giving every possible z coordinate to that, that line. Right, and then, so you're just attaching all the possible z's that line and now it becomes a plane. Right. You could picture it that way too. They're both good ways to see it. Um, then this paraboloid, what does this paraboloid look like? It has an origin, it's upward facing parabola here, upward facing parabola here, right? Upward facing parabola here and here. It has these circular cross sections, right? And so then we're saying, what's the high, what is the highest um, let's say, and let's, let's actually say both highest and lowest, because this finds maxes and minimums, right? Highest and lowest points. So here, what would you have? You're saying a, the intersection between this point, this plane and this paraboloid. So you have, um, you know, these inputs would go up to different outputs on here, right? So I'm taking ev everything on this constraint, and then I'm going to get some other parabola in a different direction, right, in this, right? So what, what would I expect? I would expect, just based on my lame graph here, right, I'd expect no max, right? Because it, it, it's just going to infinity in both directions, right? It doesn't look like any local maxes either, right? I would also expect the min at the origin, right? This This... Just from graphing it from the 3D situation, this is what it looks like. You can also kind of see this if, like I recommended before, um, if you look at the contour plot, right? So what would this look like in the contour plot? You'd see X and Y. You'd see this constraint being the, the line, Y equals negative 1 half X, right? And then you'd have these, you know, Z equals 0, Right, z equals one. These concentric circles. Whoa. Apparently, if you don't connect your uh, circle, notability does not turn it into most of a circle. There we go. Z equals two. Right. Z equals three. There, right. So you have these concentric circles. Apologies for the uh, not so circular circles, but you get the idea. These theoretically concentric circles um, centered at the origin, right? And so you can kind of see along this blue path, right? Imagine that this was your hiking path, right? You hike out this way. As you hike this way, you go all the way out to your z value approaches infinity because I'm climbing from z equals zero to z equals one, z equals two, z equals three. And then the other way, I'm climbing also to z equals infinity. Right. Um, but then right here, I have that min, right? I have that min z equals zero. That only occurs at just one place, right? Okay. So how can I solve for this? I can solve for this using And I mean, here, again, you can kind of see it from the graph here. But but in many cases, it's way, way harder to graph. Here, I purposely picked plane, paraboloid, things that we can graph just to see that it gives us reasonable answers. We'll Later, we'll do examples that are, in another video, we'll do examples that are um, quite a bit nastier, where you can't really graph it and you really want. Um, the algebra will really, then the calculus will really tell you where those maxes and mins are. So I'm going to solve using a system of three equations and three unknowns. And what are those three equations and three unknowns? Well, I'm gonna have gradient F equals gradient lambda gradient G. 
right? And I'm going to have the constraint itself, g of x, y equals c. And you might say, wait a minute, you said three equations, that's two equations. It is, I know, but this is a vector equation, right? So here, this is going to split into an x component and a y component, right? So it really is three equations. OK, because that first one was a vector. OK, so, so let's do this. So what is gradient f in this case? Gradient f is um, just 2x and 2y, right? What is gradient g? Gradient g is going to be 1 and 2. Because I'm just taking the partial derivatives of that formula right there, right? So partial x of g equals 1 and partial y of g equals 2, right? So that's that's where that 1 and 2 are coming from. Um, then I have my last equation, x plus 2y equals um, 0, right? So here's my system of three equations of three unknowns. I have 2x equals lambda. I have 2y equals 2 lambda, and then I have x equals 2y. Sorry, x equals negative 2y. Right? And now solve, solve, solve. Whatever your favorite method is for solving two equations and two unknowns, go for it. Um, it doesn't matter too much, right? So um, this one happens to be linear, so you could use matrices, you could use elimination, you could use substitution, whatever you like. Uh, I'm going to use elimination. So I'm going to double this first equation to make it 4x equals 2 lambda, and then I'm going to subtract these to eliminate lambda. I kind of like that, if you can at least, I like eliminating lambda early because we don't really care about the value of lambda. We just want the values of x and y, so you may as well eliminate lambda as early as possible. It's often convenient, right? So, so take their difference. So I have, yeah, I'm subtracting um, subtracting these two equations, right? So I have 2y minus 4x equals 2 lambda minus 2 lambda is 0, right? So I get what? I get y equals 2x, right? And then I can plug that in here into that third equation, and I get x equals negative 4x, right? Which means x is 0. Right, so I get 3x equals 0, so x is 0. And if x is 0, and then y equals 2x, then y equals 0 also. There we go. So, so this only found one place where you could have a max or min, and it was exactly what we hoped, right? It was the origin, right? So that's what we had here, right? It just confirms our expectations. There should just be a min at the origin and nothing else. That's what we found. Right, so this is this is our man at the origin. Now, I should mention this method does not give you a nice classification tool like max versus min. Um, it doesn't. You kind of have to um, have at least some sense of the graph, right? And you could plug in nearby points if you need to um, to figure out max versus min, but. Yeah, there, there isn't like a super canonical second derivative test sort of thing here. So. All right, there we go. So clean. this is a pretty clean example um, where we kind of could already find the maximums from the graph, but you know we, we set up, we did our Lagrange multiplier method and it confirmed this, expect, this graphical expectation. So see you the next video for a uglier one where we kind of really need the Lagrange. All right, thanks.